Let's try a problem. An object has v initial x plus 5 meters per second and a sub x equals plus 3 meters per second squared. v initial y is plus 7 meters per second and a sub y is plus 2 meters per second, meters per second squared. What is the object displacement when t equals 9 seconds? That problem was an object has v initial x equal to positive 5 meters per second and a sub x equal to positive 3 meters per second squared. v initial y equals positive 7 meters per second and a sub y equals positive 2 meters per second squared. What is the object's displacement when t equals 9 seconds? Well, first of all, I'd like you to copy this problem into your notes so that you'll still have it when I erase it from the board. Uh, and then please try solving the problem. Uh, please pause the video and try to solve the problem. And you should be trying to solve the problem using the same systematic approach that we introduced in the previous two series. Uh, so we've already gone over a systematic five-step method for solving kinematics problems for one-dimensional motion. Try to adapt that to this two-dimensional problem. On the other hand, if you get a little stuck, you can just go ahead and watch the videos. It'll be helpful here to choose our positive directions from the start. Well, uh, very often it's convenient to choose up and to the right as your positive directions. Let's do that here. Up and to the right as our positive directions. So this is a good notation to show that we're choosing to the right as our positive x direction and up as our positive y direction. All right, now we want to draw the path of the object. So we can draw the path of the object like this. Now we know that initially the object was moving in the positive x direction and the positive y direction. It was initially moving in both the positive x and um, y directions. And we can see that it's speeding up in both directions because you can see that the x acceleration is parallel to the initial x velocity and the y acceleration is parallel to the initial y velocity. So we started off moving to, uh, in the positive directions, and we should end up still moving in the positive directions. So you can see I've drawn this path to indicate that we started moving up and to the right, and at the end we're still moving up and to the right. So this object is going to be moving up, to, up and to the right at both the initial and the final points, um, since we chose up and to the right as our positive directions. Initially it was moving up and to the right in the positive directions, and it's speeding up in both those components. Um, by the way, it's not really obvious on first glance whether you should draw this um, path as uh, concave down or concave up, if you're familiar with those terms. I drew this as concave down. You might have thought it would look like this and be concave up. Uh, I think that it actually will be concave down, uh, but don't worry about it if, if you didn't get that right. That's not really important for solving the problem. So I think that um, the path really does look like this, concave down. It doesn't look concave up. But that's not something that it would be really worth spending a lot of time worrying about when you're solving this problem. We don't need to get this path exactly right for this problem. So the path generally is going to look like that. That's good enough for us. At this point, I'm just going to go straight into uh, the next step. Step two was to choose positive directions. We've already done that. Um, step three is to break things into components. We don't actually have to break things into components here, though, because we were already given the components. If you're already given the components, you don't need to break the overall vectors into components. So if we had been given the overall vectors on this problem, we would have to break them into components. But since we were already given the components, we don't need to do step three. So we're going on to step four. By the way, I've been referring to um, the, the steps in the five-step method. This is a five-step method that I introduced in the previous series of videos on one-dimensional motion. I hope that everybody who's watching this video on two-dimensional motion has already completed the series on one-dimensional motion. And if you have, then you should be very familiar with the systematic five-step method that we've been using for kinematics problems. Um, we want to keep trying to use that systematic method here. So step one is to draw the path. We've done that. Step two is to choose a positive direction. Well, we've done that. Step three is to break vectors into components, but we don't have to break things into components here because we were given the components. Step four is to write down your kinematics variable. Well, in this case, we have two-dimensional motion, x and y motion, so we're going to have to write down the variables for both the x and the y components. So now we have ten variables, five variables for the x component and five variables for the y component. 
We might want to make a note to ourselves, though, that the two times are going to be equal. The times are referring to the same object, so those are going to be equal. So I'm going to write those next to each other. An object has v initial x of positive 5 meters per second. Positive 5 meters per second. Uh, if you've watched my previous series of videos, you know that I am obsessive about writing down the signs, and then I'm trying to encourage you to also be obsessive about writing down the signs. Even for a positive number, you should still indicate the sign. I'm serious about that. That's something that's really going to help you as you proceed through your physics course. Um, always think about the signs, and you can force yourself to do that by writing the positive sign down in front of positive numbers, just like the negative sign in front of negative numbers. So a sub x would be 3 meters per second squared. Well, that would be a horrible way to write a sub x. That's horrible. Uh, how can we make it less horrible? Put in the sign. Always put down the sign in front of signed numbers, both positive and negative. V initial y is positive 7 meters per second. And a sub y is positive 2 meters per second squared. Positive 2 meters per second squared. What is the object's displacement? So they're asking us for displacement. Well, in order to know the displacement, we're going to have to figure out the x displacement and the y displacement. Something else that you've seen in these videos is that I strongly encourage you to use a question mark to always indicate the question. I hope that if you've completed the previous series, you're always automatically trying to use a question mark to indicate the question. Uh, and the time is 9 seconds. We know that's the same time for both the x and the y components. Okay, so this is our step four. We write down all the kinematics variables. Now that we're working in two dimensions, there's generally going to be ten kinematics variables. Five for the x and five for the y. Don't be lazy, write them all down. Then you can write down the numbers and the question in an organized fashion. So we've written down all the numbers and the question in an organized fashion. We didn't have to write down the sign for the time because time is always positive. But for everything else, we're going to write down a sign. Now we're ready to go on to step five in the method, which is to choose a kinematics equation. Um, and actually here, we're going to need two kinematics equations. We're going to need one equation for the x component and one equation for the y component. How do you know when you're ready to choose an equation? Well, you know we're ready when we know three of the kinematics variables. For example, here we know three of the x variables, so we're ready to pick an x equation. Um, how do you know which equation to pick? You want to pick the equation that's missing the variable that you don't care about. Notice that uh, over here on the x side, we don't really care about the final x velocity. We're not interested in the final x velocity. We weren't given its value, and we don't care about its value. So we want to pick the equation that's missing the final x velocity. In the previous videos, I've been encouraging you not to plug in prematurely. Start by writing down the general equation. Only after you've written down the general equation should you start plugging into it. I've also encouraged you to always use parentheses to plug in signed numbers so you can set off the sign from the rest of the equation. So the initial velocity is positive 5. Now, in the previous series of videos, we have not been plugging the units into the equation, and I'm going to continue to do that here. Um, as I mentioned before, um, if your math skills are strong, it actually is uh, maybe a good habit to try plugging in the units sometimes and making sure you can get the units to work out. But if your math skills are weak, you're probably just going to confuse yourself if you try to plug the units into the equation. As long as all of our units are standard units, we can be confident that the units will work out correctly without plugging them into the equation. So I'm not actually going to show the units in this equation for the sake of clarity. Our time was 9 seconds. We don't need to plug in a sign for the time, so that's always positive. a sub x is positive 3, and our time was 9 again. Make sure that when you're plugging in, that you're only plugging in the x variables. Remember that we're not dealing with the y variables yet. Remember that we're going to deal with the y component separately. So now we're dealing with the x component only. All right, now we can get our calculator and just work out what this is. You can actually do this whole step, uh, this whole calculation in one step on your calculator. If you have a scientific calculator, you can just type this all in in one step, and the calculator will give you the right answer. 
uh, and it turns out that we're going to get 166.5. Hundred and sixty six point five. Now that's not really an acceptable answer yet. Now that we have um, something we want to be our answer, now we have to write down the units. The units for displacement are meters. We can be confident that we, since we started with standard units, our answer will come out in standard units, even though we didn't specifically work with the units in the equation. But really important is to indicate the sign on your answer. Well, mathematically, this answer came out to be positive, so we have to show that explicitly. And we should check whether that makes sense. Did we expect um, the displacement to come out to be positive? Well, yeah, it pretty much has to, um, because we started off moving to the right, and we're going to be speeding up in that direction. So we're certainly going to end up moving to the right. So this should come out to be positive.